Okay. So, uh, medical conditions, these are the ones that we'll focus on. Um, obviously, there's more out there, but these are the ones that they'll test you on potentially for the CATA exam. Um, again, the CATA exam, minimal competency, these are the main ones that they'll talk about. Yay! <laughs> so, the first one is diabetes. I'm not going to go through every single thing on here, so I'm expecting you to read this stuff and prepare for next week because a lot of these signs and symptoms are going to be part of this narrative next week. And again, your goal is to recognize which one it is and then manage it appropriately. Okay? Now, in recognizing these conditions, there are some obvious telltale signs. Uh, we'll focus on those, but then we might focus on some of the other ones that could throw you off. So, for diabetes, um, the main thing to focus on some of these tables um, is what you will run into. Um, if there's any predisposing factors, then we'll talk about those that are pertinent, but otherwise, for example, if someone's in the diabetic emergency, there's not too much around you from the environment that you would need to tell you that's a diabetic emergency. Most of that information you'll get is from your history taking. What's the other piece that might give you some information that it's a diabetic emergency? Yeah. Your medical alert. Okay, so if they're unconscious, it's a medical alert issue. There might be some specific signs and symptoms that you might find, or signs, I'm sorry, that you might find when you do your assessment. But the main thing is what they tell you and what you find on their wrist. In saying that, there is something else that you might pick up that's really specific to diabetes when you're doing an assessment on somebody that's unconscious. Okay, so it's the odor of okay, their breath. So some people describe it as fruity smelling, flowery, acetone, um, that type of smell on the breath. So it almost smells like alcohol. Okay. Um, so if they're unconscious, you have a couple of things you can look at. Okay, you, can look, you can smell the breath, or you can look for a medical alert bracelet. Okay? If you look at some of the other signs and symptoms um, that you see there, um, the symptoms you can only get if they're conscious, correct? Because that's something they report to you. Signs that you would find, uh, let's see, dry skin, uh, under diabetic coma signs and symptoms, flushed skin, flushed and dry, unconscious coma, that's usually, but then again, that's, those are signs of other things as well, so that's not going to give you much information. Uh, decreased respiration rate, increased heart rate, again, they're in shock, that's not going to give you much information either. Okay, so some of the key signs for a diabetic emergency is the free breath, medic alert, uh, maybe the skin conditioning color will, will help you out as well. But otherwise, that's all you get. Do they ever have any, I don't know, I haven't done it before, like calluses or anything like that? Possibly. Yeah. And where else might, might they have um, syringe marks? Mm. But, uh, but where else? Okay. Shoulder. Abdomen yeah. as well. Some people have a, might have an automatic pump. Okay, so those are other things you could pick up on. But those are things that you'd find in your head to toe, not so much your history taking. Okay. Well, was good to use also like for fat bumps in the forearms. Oh, okay. What? There's like fat lumps, they're like little nodules that they'll get. Like my entire family. And, and what's it from? It's from the diabetes. It's okay. My family the only people that have it the ones with diabetes. Wow. So it's just like where it gets positive or like it just yeah, left there for whatever reason? Yeah. I don't know why, but... Yes, I've never heard of it. So, I mean, that might be something to look for as well. Dr. Okay. So if you're going to make any notes on the table, just circle the ones that really stand out that aren't related to other conditions specifically. Okay, so the fruity breath is one. Um, the medical alert bracelet, you can make a note there as well. And the history take me is your most important one. Do they all have medical alerts? Like, they all have um, They should. They should, to be honest, they should. So it could be a bracelet, necklace, anklet. I have never seen a tattoo. That might not be a bad idea. I actually have a whole bunch of them. Good. Yeah. What are you looking for? Where's the tattoos? Uh, he had it on his forearm. Yeah. Okay. So they'll never forget it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just shower with it on. I wonder would you would you look for that? Oh, maybe I'll use that tattoo. I don't think he would miss it though. Like he was like it was it just had like the metaphor of like on the bracelet. It was red and then the snake or whatever that's in the middle was bright blue. So yeah. it was like I don't think he would miss that. Yeah. So, so those are things to look for in determining whether or not it's, it's a diabetic emergency. 
If you figure it's a diabetic emergency, what do you do? Simple sugar, simple carbs, apple juice, um, to get them out of that condition. Now, if they're hyperglycemic, high blood glucose, will that be a problem? It doesn't really with that. No, let's say yeah. We, we could. <laughs> but then anyhow, um, is, is it a problem to give them extra sugar if they're already high in sugar? Not necessary. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't make them worse. Okay. Now, if they're low blood glucose, relatively high blood insulin, would giving them more insulin be problematic? Yeah, it can kill them. Okay. So you don't want to make the mistake of giving them too much insulin. But how do you know? Do you know? if it's hyperglycemia or hyperglycemia. So you don't know unless you actually take it, unless you measure it. Okay, so unless you do blood glucose, but as an athletic therapist, we don't do that. Why it's gone. It was here. <laughs> the vitals, blood glucose wasn't on that list. Okay, now if you have the ability to, you're not allowed to do it. If they're conscious, tell them to take their blood glucose and go from there. Okay, but otherwise, just give sugar as the first responder. Um, if you look under the, the row that says other, without a blood glucose reading, when in doubt, provide simple carbs. Okay, that's just to get, it out, um, get them out of that situation immediately, but to, um, uh, to, to keep their blood sugar levels consistent for the rest of the day, then you might want to give them complex carbohydrates after you've neutralized, or after you've, um, what's the word? Take care of the kids, normalized. Yeah, after you stabilize or normalize their condition with simple carbs, then you can give them complex carbs. Here's the key thing, because this always comes up. If someone's like semi-conscious or unconscious, can you put like something in their gums or the gel? Could you put it around their lips and take their tongue out and wipe it? Like, no, sorry, that was just way off. Can you put like gel and stuff under their tongue or in their cheek or anything like that if they're unconscious? You can't. Okay. So I put that in caps. Patient must be conscious and control their airway. Control their airway means they can't be coughing or aspirating or just having respiratory difficulty. Okay. What happens if they're unconscious or if they're having respiratory difficulty and you put something in their mouth? It might go into their airway. It might, it might obstruct the airway. It might get into their lungs. It might cause them to aspirate and a whole slew of issues if there's foreign objects in the airway. Okay. So they have to be fully conscious and control their airway. Uh, Everything else is just other information that's good to know. So, for the most part, uh, the two or three signs and symptoms that are really specific for diabetes intervene with simple carbohydrates, um, and they're only allowed to take it if they're conscious and control their airway. Those are the main points for that box. Okay. Questions about diabetes? Okay. Uh, the next one on the list is stroke. Not much we can do for this. Okay. Um, recognizing that it's a stroke. So one of the key ways is what population are you working with? Okay, so if you're working with an older population, there's senior games that take place over 65 years of old, 60 years of age. Um, so if you're working with a population like that, then that's something that should be in the back of your mind. How do you know that they're going into, or that they're having a stroke? Uh, they use the acronym FAST. It's, it's the first three letters, though. The T just says record the time. But the first three. Um, indicate that there's problems unilaterally. Okay, so with respect to face, unilateral face impairment, unilateral arm weakness is A, and speech impediments. Okay. Other things to look out for, incontinence, anxiety, confusion, seizures, and loss of consciousness, but those last four or five things that I mentioned are also issues with other conditions. So that might not give you the full picture, but the F, the A, and the S will. If they have a stroke, EMS, ABCs, make them comfortable. If they soil themselves, you need to be empathetic and just recognize crowd control and cover the person up. Okay? Um, so I put down no food or drink, rest, reassure, empathetic, stay calm, and crowd control. Okay? That's all you can do for a stroke. Uh, the next one is seizures. There's many reasons why a seizure can take place. Uh, the one that conditions epilepsy, and as a result of epilepsy, they could go into seizures. Um, signs and symptoms of a seizure, the person normally goes through four stages, and I put them there for you. Aura, tonic, clonic, and postictal. Um, aura is a sensation that they feel, 
that they've probably felt before. And so they will tell you, or they might even not tell you, they might just get on the ground themselves just because they're, they know it's coming. So the aura is suggestive of them knowing that a seizure is just about to occur. Uh, the tonic phase is when they're just staring into space, they're just confused, and then when they, some people get into this clonic phase where you see the violent, uh, the violent contractions. Okay, and that's the video that I posted. Um, the one thing that you need to be aware of is that last phase, the post-tictal, because during the first three phases, we don't do anything. You just let them go. Okay, so just protect them, move furniture away. If you can put a blanket under their head, put a blanket under their head. But you have to let them go. Do not restrain them. Don't grab the C-spine and let them go. When they're done, two things to keep in mind. Well, three things to keep in mind. So ABCs, like always. Uh, the second thing is just like a person with stroke, you need to be empathetic. They might have soiled themselves and they might be a little bit embarrassed. Okay. The third thing you need to be aware of is the fact that they'll be confused, irritable, and possibly combative. Okay, so they might take a swing at you. So just be prepared to, you know, dodge and weave. Um, but when you rest and reassure, calm them down. Let them know what's going on and what just happened. Hopefully they'll um, calm them down so they're not as combative. Um, as a first responder, though, just make sure you call EMS for specific situations. You don't have to call EMS for an epileptic seizure every single time, but only specific cases. In the cases I listed there, um, it's called status epilepticus. If it's a repeated seizure, so if they have another one that same day, you have to call EMS. If it's prolonged, so anything greater than three minutes is considered a long seizure. So anything longer than three minutes, it doesn't seem like it's stopping. If they remain unconscious, so typically they wake up and they come to, they're just a little bit combative. But if they remain unconscious, call EMS. If they're pregnant, if it's a result of trauma, so if they get kicked in the head and they go into convulsions, that's obviously a brain issue, call EMS. And any other life-threatening medical conditions. So people can have seizures as a result of hyperthermia and a diabetic coma or a diabetic emergency. Okay? So if the seizure is related to any of these other conditions, so diabetes, pregnancy, trauma, and so on and so forth, call EMS. A normal seizure is they go in, they get out in less than three minutes, they're combative a little bit, and they're like, oh, I forgot to take my meds. Okay, they don't have, you, have to, you don't have to call EMS for that particular situation. So if, like an example, if an exam came in and they were, like they were already seizure when we came in, no. um, we don't have to call EMS right away. No. So we would take like take note of the time, yeah. see how long they seizure for, and then like talk to them when they come to, like see what the cause of it yeah. is. And if it's like, oh, like I always have seizures, you just like not call EMS and like go through like your your assessment. Your assessment, and then like the follow up is to be like, like refer oh, refer to like you you should go to a doctor and check them take your meds and stuff. Yeah. So and then can come in and they seizure for a prolonged time. You call EMS and then just like continue like making sure airway is exactly. fine. So if it's prolonged, if they don't wake up, um, if they wake up and they said, yeah, I fell on my head, right. call. Um, if you do your sample, they're diabetic, mm -hmm. call. Um, if they're female, are, are you pregnant, call. If it's a drowning, call as well. Okay. That's a good question. If in real life, like you walked upon somebody who was seizuring, like I guess, like a normal person's reaction would be to call a Yeah. Okay. But like having like the training, we just wait or yeah. like, oh, yeah, you can wait, and then get more information afterwards. Um, so you do, your, you do your ABCs like you normally would. In this case, if they wake up, you just go right to your focus, take a sample, and then look for the medical alert bracelets. If from your history taking, it sounds weird, they've never had medication, they've never had a seizure before, they just went in, there's no trauma, not diabetic, yeah. not pregnant, nothing like that. If it's an unknown a seizure because of an unknown cause, that's a call to EMS as well, because they need to find out why. Yeah, so you can definitely wait and find more information first. Okay. Um, any other questions about seizures? I'm just checking the time. Um, what we'll do is just, we'll just finish off asthma and anaphylaxis and then we'll just finish a little bit early. Okay. And we'll save all the scenarios for next week. And it'll give you more time to take a look at some of the signs and symptoms.
Uh, for asthma, uh, a couple things that can be caused by all sorts of different things. Signs and symptoms, it's not just wheezing. Okay, wheezing can be indicative of any other respiratory condition. So make sure you take your sample. Um, signs and symptoms, respiratory distress, hyperventilation, dizziness, chest tightness, and so on and so forth. You can read that on your own. Management-wise, and this is where it gets kind of gray because it depends on local protocols. So when you're dealing with medication, um, there's salbuterol, uh, ventolin, and atrovenin for that. There's another one. Albuterol. Albuterol and ventolin are the two ones, and then there's the, the, the disc. That's another one. And then medication, epipens. Um, what I did, so the sources I've got this from are, are the physician statements from the National Athletic Training Association. This is a general guide, but again, they're American. But I've also downloaded the document from the Alberta Health Services, Medical Protocols for Adult and Pediatric when it comes to medical emergencies. So this is what EMS uses. So this is for Alberta. It's a 170-page document, and it has everything in there from C-spine, asthma, cardiac arrest, and so on. It's a wonderful document to take a look at. Um, and so I got some of this information from that because that is our local protocol. Okay. So if someone is having an asthma attack, relax, reassure, I'm looking under management, that box there. Assist in the administration of medication as per the physician's instructions. So the person who has puffers, they might have instructions like, okay, take this blue one one time before exercise, if you have an attack during, take this until up to three times until it normalizes. If it doesn't, then go to the emergency room. Other people might be like, if you ever have an attack, just use this, and that's it. Okay, so it's as, it's, it's personalized, the instructions, uh, with respect to the medication. Hydrate, control breathing, I'm again looking under management, that box there. Um, and, and then address external factors if, if you can. Again, wheezing can be a sign of other respiratory conditions. That's why sample and your history are very important. Um, most of the more important notes are under the signs and symptoms where it says other. Okay, and that's where some of the little things with the protocols come in. So uh, prevention, just read that on your own. If you skip down to the line that says administration of medication notes, that's like the third or fourth sentence down. So underneath it says, Assist in the administration of medication according to local protocols. Patient must be able to take their medication independently before assisting them, which means if they're semi-conscious or ultra-conscious um, and they're unable to do it themselves, then they shouldn't be taking it. And that's important. Okay? If they're unable to do it themselves, then you cannot assist them. You don't do it. Okay? Patient must be able to take medication independently before you can help them. Um, your five R's, you went through that with your EMR class. Um, and then here is what you need to do for uh, your OPs. Take a full set of vitals, sample as well, before you do any medication, and then recheck the vitals after, because the medication will affect your vitals. Okay. Complete set all six, figure it out, then your intervention with the medicine, and then check the vitals again. In LP, like in real life, if this were to happen, they were starting to go really use that, and they could use their pen. Would they use the okay, like take your pen, or would they hold on a second, let me take your vitals, and then you take your pen? So it depends. Okay. Okay, and then we'll talk about that in a second. Okay. Um, but generally speaking, pro like just to keep things simple for medication purposes, take a full set of vitals, intervene, take a full set of vitals. Okay. Now, in real life, there's going to be a whole bunch of other factors that are even involved, right? Like if they're like, uh, uh, yeah. just jab them. <laughs> Don't worry about the vitals. But if they're like, my lips are tingling, I just got stung by a bee, I'm allergic to bees, um, but my lips, it's not bad yet, but I think it's going to be, then you can take your full set of vitals, hit them with that pen, hopefully that'll reverse some of the effects, and then take your vitals again. So it, it depends on how far they are. Right. Okay. And then, so you take your vitals, interview with medication, I give it with like an X pen, take your vitals, and then is it, you need to go to the doctor right away, or do you wait and see how they? Oh, they have to go regardless. Right. So if it's an so so if they have an anaphylactic condition mm -hmm. and they've been stung by a bee, let's say, they they have to go to the emergency room. Okay. Um, the EpiPen only buys them time; it doesn't reverse the situation. Right. So if it progresses really fast and you decide to do vitals and stuff before, and then they get 
or not. Like, they can't administer them themselves. Mm -hmm. And you can't give it to them. Yes, yeah, so that's why you pay attention while you're taking the vitals. Just pay attention to them as well. Keep talking to them. Um, if it looks like, and then like a lot of times it's not like their consciousness is going to be altered. It's more so they're just going to complain more of symptoms. Like my chest is really hurting now. It feels really tight. Um, it feels like my, my tongue is swelling even more now. But they're still comp like they're still able to comprehend what you're talking about. So in that situation, you might want to stop vitals and then give it to them right away. So, um, but they're still conscious and they're still capable of doing it independently so that they're just complaining about other things. Uh, take a full set of vitals before administering medication and recheck the vitals. Um, the Alberta Health Services Protocol does not describe a specific protocol for personal inhalers because that's the instructions given by the physician. The NAT, however, says that even with personal medication, you, can, you should only give up to three puffs in an hour at the most. So, you, so I don't know if you've had this happen at like, some of your events, especially with the wrestling with the kids, is that they'll get into this asthma-like situation and they'll just keep like, shooting this in their mouth. And so because this can affect the rest of their body, NAT says just three at the most, otherwise call EMS. Don't give them more than that. Okay. Um, any questions about asthma? Okay. How many of you have not seen this before? How many of you have seen the disc? Okay, so it's like a little pill disc. You just you push it and it puts uh, some powder in this chamber. So as you push it, the powder gets in the chamber and there's a little hole there. You just put it in your mouth and you just, you just inhale it. This one takes a little bit of timing. Uh, the one thing you have to recognize is if you're working with kids, sometimes they swallow it. It doesn't go into the lungs. It needs to get into the lungs. How do you know it gets into the lungs? If they go, and they're like, that tastes bad. They just swallowed it. They didn't go into the lungs. Okay, so then ask them. Uh, what they're supposed to do is like, do you guys, does anybody have asthma? How do you do this? I don't know, I kind of just take it. It's easy to use. Like, as you're pushing it, I'm, I start inhaling and push it. Yes. So, so I posted a video online where they demonstrate how to do this, um, but the lady on the video said you have to exhale completely first as much as you can, so that the reaction is to inhale. So you have to blow all your air, air out. Once it's all out, spray and inhale at the same time. And then hold it, yeah. So it gets into your airways, because that's what it needs to do with that. Um, and so Ooh, okay. okay, well, let's leave it at that. Um, we'll talk about anaphylaxis. We'll cover that next week. So just read over the notes. I'll bring these again next week. These are the twin injectors. We'll play with these before we get into the snares. Okay? Do you guys have any questions about uh, what we did today? Or what we talked about? Okay. So heads up for next week. Uh, we will finish off anaphylaxis. We'll answer any questions you might have about these conditions or environmental. Make sure you try to do a mock scenario sometime next week at your sites. Okay, so that's on the schedule. Just sometime next week, just do a mock scenario just to practice with your supervisor or your mentor. And the Friday class is canceled. That's great. Is that a mock scenario? No, it's not. No, it's just practice so that you can do it with someone who's grading you later on at the end of the semester. And you want it to be medical or It can be whatever you want it to. Oh. Um, but just to get you and the person grading you on the same page so you know what their expectations are. Okay, so if you have the opportunity to get um, to be observed by the person evaluating you, then do that. So with STS, you might just want to maybe plan ahead, um, find a supervisor who's willing to do it for you a month from now, and then try to practice with them as much as you can. Okay. Um, any questions before you guys leave? Okay. You guys have a good day. I think we're good. Yeah, and not to throw all the kits back in the room.